<laughs> this one is 1994. My mother said she was held back. Now, it seemed like I remember we used to say left back, mm. but someone told me it was really held back, and I should have gone into further. It is held back, left back, isn't it? I, I always thought it was left back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Uh, anyhow, I, I was left back myself in the first grade you know, for being a bad boy. And, uh, but uh, that turned out okay because I met my best childhood friend that way. My mother stopped eating. Eating was the last sign of her tenacity, the last expression of her passionate being, except for outbursts, for rare outbursts of, I love you, or grabbing your hand or anyone's and kissing you. I say that first she died, then she quit eating. Mm. What she was chewing in her last years didn't provide the nourishment she craved. It's amazing that she went on for so long. Perhaps what would have killed her had she lived longer also kept her from her an insight that would have caused her to despair. Or maybe a relentless, incommunicable despair that inhabited her being was refracted through the prism of her dauntless soul into ecstasy or peace. I had witnessed 54 years earlier in the Catskill Mountains, my mother leaning over the side of a hospital bed and into a pan that my father held, throw up 65% of her blood. I slowly approached her as she was wheeled from her room, an angelic look upon her face, one smile. She said to me, don't worry, Mickey, I'll be all right. Uh, and back to the, future, the present of the poem. Our mother's food tr tray card read double portions. <laughs> and until she'd stopped eating, she scoffed every morsel no matter what. And when the last spoonful was gone, licked the spoons, the cups, the bowls. <laughs> if you put your hand on her arm and asked, how's it going, Mom? She'd brush it aside. You're going to eat me out of house and home, I would tell her, as she once told my brother and me. She also used to say, all I have to do is look at food, and I gain weight. <laughs> and for more than 10 years, she'd been eating everything in sight, even off someone else's tray when a new orderly sat her too close to one. <laughs> but her five feet one inches found its equilibrium at 98 pounds. I wonder if the plaque and snarls and her 95-year-old brain prevented her from appreciating that irony. I wouldn't bet on it. I don't give up on anyone, especially she who hadn't given up on me, even when I'd given up on myself. People will surprise you, like when I'd said to my mother a year ago, when she was dressed in calf-high white socks and a girlish dress, Mom, you look like a schoolgirl today. And she glanced at me, then turned her gaze to the tabletop in front of her and shouted, Yeah, I was left back. Yeah. Oh, I said left back. Yeah. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. The last one yeah, is from Iowa City poem, even though I wrote it in 1997. Uh, this one isn't as uh, long-winded. <laughs> Uh, feeling good, what's it good for? I feel, I feel good. Feeling good is a mini vacation. On a regular vacation, you do things. With a mini, you don't have to do anything. Not doing anything feels good, when most of the time, you've been doing everything. Feeling good, what's it good for? If it's good for nothing, then nothing's good enough for me. It's good to feel good with others, but it's better to feel good alone than to not feel good at all. When you don't feel good, it seems like no one else does either. So it's good for helping others feel good. How do you get to feel good? Beats me, I do things that sometimes make me feel good, but other times don't. Weirdly enough, my acceptance of that feels good. Or keeps me from feeling bad. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first poem for last.